Hi, this is Matt Baker. Today, I'm going to show you five websites that I uploaded my DNA to and that you can upload yours to as well. Now, previously on this channel, I covered the various companies that will send you a special kit and then use that to extract your DNA, transfer it into a digital format, and then analyze it in order to give you some information about yourself. Usually this includes something about your ancestry and perhaps some health-related information. However, the sites that I'll be talking about today are a bit different. These companies don't send you a kit. The assumption is that you've already tested your DNA somewhere else and that you simply want to upload your already existing DNA file in order to receive additional information beyond what you have already received. So the websites that we'll be looking at today are Genome Link, My True Ancestry, Genetic Life Hacks, Prometheus, and GEDmatch. But before I get into it, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, MyHeritage. I actually asked MyHeritage to sponsor this particular video because I figured that some of you out there might not have a DNA file ready to go. And therefore, you will need to get your DNA tested first before exploring the websites in today's video. If this applies to you, then MyHeritage is a great place to start. Their DNA test kit is one of the most affordable and easiest to use. It costs around $100, but you can usually get it for much less because they often have major sales throughout the year. You should also note that MyHeritage uses the swab method for DNA collection, which is much easier than the spit method. All you have to do is take this little device that looks like a long Q-tip and rub it against the inside of your cheek for about 30 seconds. The results you get are pretty great. You get a map of where your ancestors came from, together with ethnicity percentages, as well as relative matches. But the really great thing about MyHeritage is that it is a full-blown family tree building website that gives you access to over 20 billion records and makes it really easy to discover who your ancestors were. So if you haven't yet done a DNA test, I recommend that you try out MyHeritage by using the link in the description or pinned comment. Be sure to use the code to get free shipping for the DNA kit as well as a 30-day free trial of MyHeritage's subscription plan. Then, if you decide to keep the subscription, you also get 50% off. Okay, so let's assume that you've now already had your DNA tested and that you now want to try out some of the upload sites. Well, the first thing you need to do is download your DNA file. You can do this from most testing companies, but as an example, let me show you how to do it from MyHeritage. Once you've logged in, just go to DNA and select Manage DNA Kits. Then click on the three dots next to your kit number and select Download Kit. From there, you can save your complete DNA profile as a simple text file. You'll need this text file to use the various upload sites that I'm about to show you. So the first site I want to talk about is called Genome Link. It's a great place to start because much of the information you can get is free and you don't even need to give them your credit card to sign up. The first thing they'll do is get you to upload that text file we just talked about. The whole process is extremely fast, and within minutes, you'll be looking at some results. So you can see here that they give you a basic breakdown of your ancestry, but since you've already tested your DNA, you probably already know that by now. The new information you're going to get is in the traits section. Here, they give you about 50 traits for free. There's some information about how well you absorb certain vitamins, as well as some information about your physical traits, personality, etc. If you want to get more trait information, you can use their streak feature. Basically, you just need to access their website at least once a week and provide at least one bit of feedback each week. So, for example, Genome Link predicted that I have a stronger tendency to be extroverted. However, I'm actually more of an introvert, so I'm going to select no. If you keep doing this week by week, your streak goes up and you get access to more free traits. You can also simply pay $14 and get access to 200 more traits right away. And if you stay on one of their plans, you get new traits every week. 
Reports are a bit different. You have to pay separately for each one of these, and they range from around $20 to around $70. Let me show you a few that are available. This one's called the Global Ancestry Report, and it comes with some pretty cool graphics. You can spin the globe around and see all the various ethnicities that were found in your DNA. You can then learn about each ethnicity and even see which of your chromosomes has DNA from that group. It's a great way to increase your knowledge of history and geography. There's also this ancient ancestry report that told me that most of my ancient ancestors were shepherds and farmers. And this Viking report that broke down my Viking ancestry into several subcategories. Okay, so the next site I want to show you is called My True Ancestry. This site is unique in that instead of comparing your DNA to large sample sets made up of various modern populations, which is what most DNA companies do, it instead compares your DNA to several people whose bodies have been found at various archaeological sites. So, for example, about 1,000 years ago, King Athelred the Unready of England ordered the execution of all Danes living in his kingdom. This led to an event known as the St. Bryce's Day Massacre, in which 37 men were killed at a church in Oxford. Well, in 2008, the remains of those victims were found, and at least one had his DNA extracted and tested. My True Ancestry has over 500 such DNA profiles, ranging from the prehistoric Cheddar Man, who lived in 7150 BCE, to some poor bloke who died during the last major outbreak of the bubonic plague in Western Europe, which occurred in Marseille, France in 1720. So using this method, my true ancestry has determined that I am about 25% Frankish, which probably explains why I like Charlemagne so much. But as you can see, I've also got quite a bit of Celtic, as well as some Visigothic and Danish Viking. But here's what I find really cool. Instead of providing me with relative matches to living people, it provides me with matches to their archaeological samples. So my top result is to a woman from Norway who died around the year 1200. She was one of the three skeletons found in Trodheim that were studied in 2017. The study showed that she died from a deadly pathogen found in her teeth. They even did a facial reconstruction and gave her the name Regna. Now, according to my true ancestry, my DNA is 84% closer to Regna as compared to other users. They even show me the chromosomes where we share DNA in common and the length of the SNPs we share, measured in centimorgans. So once again, to use My True Ancestry, the first thing you need to do is upload your DNA. This site takes a little bit longer to analyze the results, about 10 to 15 minutes. But once things are ready, you can look at a few results for free. However, if you want to compare your DNA to more samples, you have to pay, and there are several tiers to choose from. Basically, the more you pay, the more ancient samples you get, as well as some extra tools. Okay, next up is GEDmatch. If you're interested in finding as many relatives as possible, this is the one site that you absolutely need to upload your DNA to. Most of the main DNA testing sites give you relative matches, but unless you do every test from every company, you are going to be limited to only one database. GEDmatch helps solve this problem by being sort of a central database that everyone can add their DNA to. Plus, it's free. Although, if you're a genealogy expert, you can pay extra to gain access to some advanced tools. The other great thing about GEDmatch is that it helps police to solve violent crimes. Now, when you sign up for GEDmatch, you now get the option to opt in or opt out of allowing the police to use your information. So if you don't want them to use it, you can still upload to GEDmatch and maintain your privacy. However, if you are willing to help out, I personally think it's a great idea. Basically, if one of your relatives commits a serious crime but doesn't have their DNA in any public database, the police are still able to find you and through you, 
find the culprit. But don't worry, you're not going to get blamed for a crime that one of your cousins committed. Investigators will be able to tell that you are a close familial match to the criminal, but not the actual criminal. All right, we're now going to shift the focus from genealogy to health. In a previous video, I talked about Nebula, a company that sequences your entire genome and then links your genes to genes discussed in scientific studies as potentially impacting disease risk. Well, a low-cost alternative to Nebula is a site called Prometheus. The main difference being that Prometheus only looks at some of your DNA as opposed to all of it. But it works in a somewhat similar manner. Once you upload your DNA, which you have to obtain from another testing company, such as MyHeritage, you have to pay $12. Then you get a screen that looks like this. Simply click on the three dots and select View Report. Now, the amount of information that Prometheus gives you can be a bit overwhelming and potentially even a bit scary. But just keep in mind that being at an increased risk for a disease doesn't mean that you're actually going to get it. So for example, the report says that I have a two times risk of Alzheimer's. Well, the average risk of getting Alzheimer's at age 65 is 2%, which means that my risk is 4%. But to put it another way, there's still a 96% chance that I'm not going to get it. Now, if you do have any rare genetic diseases, Prometheus is likely to find them. For example, it found that I have the genes for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Now, I already knew that from some of the other tests that I took, but it is useful to know. If I had been a smoker, I definitely need to consider quitting. However, luckily, I've never even puffed a cigarette once. So although I did tell my doctor about this result, which led him to run some extra lung tests on me, so far, everything seems to be okay. Now, there are a lot of settings on this report that you can play around with, but one that I want to point out is the sample population. It has defaulted me to Caucasian, which means that it's comparing my disease risk to that of other Caucasians. However, you can change this to African American, Asian, or a few other possibilities. If your ethnicity is not on the list, you can just select average from all populations. Okay, the last site I want to show you is called Genetic Life Hacks. It's actually a blog run by an educator named Debbie Moon, and it has lots of great articles about health-related matters and how they relate to genetics. You can read the articles for free, but if you sign up for a membership, which costs $8 per month, it will customize every article so that your genotype is shown at the bottom. Of course, the first thing you need to do is upload your DNA, but that only takes a few seconds. So for example, here's a recent article about long COVID, a topic that's on many people's minds these days. Now, obviously the research on long COVID is in the very early stages, and the author is careful to point that out. But she does talk about some possible genes that might play a role, such as the MTHFR gene, which helps the body process folate. If you have an atypical version of this gene, your ability to process folate is decreased, which might make you more likely to get long COVID. I signed up for a membership, so the article automatically tells me that my genotype for MTHFR is GG, which is typical. However, if you get AG or AA, you might be at a higher risk. Once again, though, keep in mind that higher risk doesn't automatically mean that you're definitely going to get such and such a disease. Often, the increased risk is very small, and usually there are multiple genes involved in each disease process. So be sure to bear these things in mind when you look at your results. Another neat feature of this website is their cheat sheet, which you can get for $45. It comes with an annual membership, so it's a good way to sign up for the whole site. What you get is a 64-page cheat sheet with all your genetic variants listed, along with links to relevant articles. It's color-coded, so you can easily find the genes that put you at risk, the ones marked in red being the most important. 
So for example, I noticed a red box here, indicating that I am at an increased risk for autoimmune diseases. If I click the link, I can go straight to the article about that and get some life hacks on what I can do to counteract my genes by making a few small changes to my diet. Okay, so that was a look at five different websites you can upload your DNA to. However, before I go, I also want to point out that of the three big testing companies, only one of them lets you upload your data from a different company. That company is MyHeritage. In other words, if you tested at Ancestry or 23andMe, you can download your DNA file from either of those sites and then upload it to MyHeritage for free in order to see how MyHeritage analyzes your DNA as well as to get relative matches from MyHeritage's database. So that's another great reason to check out MyHeritage. You can find a link to them and all of the websites I discussed in this video in the description. Thanks for watching.